hello 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 and welcome back to another episode of the can i be real podcast it is me rachel and today is the day after easter so it is april 5th 2021 and i just wanted to make sure y'all had something ready for for that for this monday this monday that's going to be hopefully a beautiful monday i wanted to briefly uh i don't want to say apologize but apo- give a, give my reasonings behind while these why these past couple episodes are going to be or uh, have been in the next couple episodes will be kind of different compared to what I've done last year what I've done the beginning of this year I'm really just trying to find my 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 place and find like how exactly I want to do these episodes how I want to do the movie review, movie reviews and the spiritual application how I want to tie that together so I'm still kind of testing out some theories so you guys just bear with me have mercy on me give me grace it's all going to be good pray for me that I will just find how I want to do this I want to get stuff out to you guys um once again I want to mention though how this episode is going to work so it'll be a I'm going to talk about the movie the movie that we're going to review we're going to review a movie and then we're going to talk about how it applies on a spiritual level so before we jump into the movie and I tell you what movie it is if you don't already know by the title we're going to say a quick prayer because you know we can't start anything off without prayer okay so if you can but go ahead and bow with me Heavenly Father God I thank you Lord for this time thank you Lord for your son Jesus who died on a cross and was raised on the third day so that we would be able to have a relationship with you I pray that this episode will go well and that you will give me the words to say I pray all these things in your son Jesus name amen so if you haven't seen already by the title, today's episode is Mulan, movie movie review and a word. So for the movie review, let's go. We got to start off with the summary because I know, I know, I know a lot of you have seen Mulan and this is not the live action. This is the 1998 original uh, animation, Disney animation Mulan. The, the, the live action was good too, but we talking about the animation today, okay? So I'm going to read the movie summary and then we're going to jump into a couple of things that I personally loved about the movie. So this retelling of the old Chinese folktale is about the story of a young Chinese maiden who learns that her that her weakened and lame father is to be called up into the army in order to fight the invading Huns. Knowing that he would never survive the rigors of war in his state, she decides to disguise herself and join in his place. Unknown to her, her ancestors are aware of this and try to prevent it. They order a tiny disgraced dragon, Mushu, to join her in order to force her to abandon her plan. He agrees, but when he meets Mulan, he learns that she cannot be dissuaded and so decides to help her in the perilous time in the perilous times ahead. So that was just a brief summary that someone kind of had written for this movie. And I feel like it did a pretty good job of kind of, you know, covering pretty much what the movie was about. So the first thing about this movie that I feel like if anyone sees it, it'll be like one of the highlights of this movie. The songs. <laughs> I love the songs. This Mulan has some good songs, obviously. Does it have the best soundtrack of Disney of all the Disney movies? Probably not. They'll probably go to Lion King one or two. Um, maybe not the you know. So maybe Mulan is not the best, but it has it has it has a couple strong hitters. It has Honor to Us All, I'll Make a Man Out of You, Girl Worth Fighting For. Like those, those are those songs are my three favorite. I like so I I also like Reflection. Like they're just great they're just they're so they're making you want to sing along they make you kind of want to do a little bop as you sing along you know they're easy to easy to you know sing along and especially the I'll make a man out of you that song I legit have on my phone right now <laughs> I legit have that song downloaded I think I, I bought it this is back when um before Apple Music came out when you had to actually buy songs on iTunes I bought this song so I have this song this is a, this that's how that's how deep I love this song. That's how deep I love Mulan. A girl, or uh, and then I, ha- I think, do I have a girl with fighting for? I don't. I don't have a girl with fighting for, but I know I have. I'll make a man out of you. So the first thing about this movie that was hands down, one of the things that really stood out to me was the music, the soundtrack. It was fitting for, you know, the scenes. Everything, every song made sense. When they were saying honor to us all, it was about Mulan getting prepared to meet the matchmaker so that she could bring honor to her family by matching with a suitable young man being a you know a a a bride so that's how they brought honor that's how she would would be able to bring honor to her family as a woman in this culture and then when it comes to i'll make a man out of you that's when uh shang the captain of of his uh his army or whatever he's trying to train these little these dudes to become warriors and they struggling struggling with a cr they struggling to uh to 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 
do push-ups to fight you know they're just struggling to do everything and so he's like I'll make a man out of you yet by the time I get done with y'all y'all gonna be oh you know y'all gonna be burly y'all gonna be burly and tough out here you know so and then the girl worth fighting for kind of showed you it was it was a song that when you actually listen to the words um from the other guys you have when Mulan speaks but when you actually listen to the words of the other guys a lot of it is it's very telling of their culture um but it was also very it's just a very interesting it's just a cute song you know they're like what, what are you fighting for I'm fighting for a girl back home I got a girl back home I'm fighting for that's what I think about when I'm alone and that's what I think about when I'm with y'all you know I'm, I'm not thinking about y'all I'm thinking about this girl that I got fighting for back home and then Mulan kind of brings into her thing like oh what about her brain and her smarts and her wits and they're like um no we want her to be cute and she can cook <laughs> So it was like, oh, okay, y'all standards are kind of low. But anyway, no, 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 no. But yeah, so the songs, the songs, the songs, the music, the soundtrack, hands down, phenomenal. And I say that about a lot of things because I think a lot of things are phenomenal. I think a lot of things are really, really cool, really great. Um, but yeah, so the second thing, number two, is Eddie Murphy as Mushu. Can we just give a round of applause? Eddie Murphy as Mushu made this movie. Eddie Murphy, first of all, is a black comedian. He is hilarious, okay? He is so funny. He did a lot of movies back in the in the 90s and the early 2000s. And Eddie Murphy as Mushu is what made this movie so memorable because it would have been a good movie. But the fact that it was so, there was scenes that were so funny, Eddie Murphy's one-liners really helped drive this movie. Because, you know, Eddie Murphy played Donkey and Shrek. So think Donkey and Shrek, but in... Instead of DreamWorks, it's Disney. So there you go. That kind of shows you how funny this movie was, how funny Eddie Murphy was as Mushu, which is great. And then, like, one of my favorite one-liners was when he was like, dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow, dishonor on your whole family. And you're just like, whoa, Mushu, calm down. It was an accident. She did. She slapped you because she was scared. She didn't know. She didn't know, bro. So it was just funny. He just had a whole bunch of one-liners that just made this movie, like, when he was like, let's go kick some honey buns. I used to love that when I was really young. I still do. I ain't gonna hold you. So... It's just a really lot. There's Eddie Murphy just, he made this movie. He did his thing. He did his thing. And he deserves all the flowers for this movie. Um, as well as all the other voice actors, the one who played Mulan and all the singing actors. But Mushu, Eddie Murphy, sir, you did this. You did this. You made this movie, uh, you made this movie as enjoyable as it is. If it had not been for Eddie Murphy playing Mushu, I cannot say this movie would have been as good as it was. So they made the right choice. And number three. The third thing that I really liked about this movie was honestly the overall plot. I really enjoyed how it wasn't just some damsel in distress. Oh my kind sir, young handsome man, come save me. Nah, Mulan was like, I'm going to war to save my family. I'm gonna dress up like a dude because I don't want to die because I'm a woman. And matter of fact, Shang, you cute and all, but let me save you real quick, drag you, put you up on my horse and drag you out of the snow. Like she was on some tough girl stuff. Like she was out here. So I just really liked the overall plot and just how it, 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 there was like, you know, like a little buds of romance between Mulan and Shang, but it wasn't about that. And like the live action kind of did away with that little romance and it still flowed. It still, it still worked like it, because in, even in the animation, it was such a small part of the overall plot that you didn't, it's like, oh, that's cute, but back to Mulan fighting the Huns, you know what I'm saying? So it was more like, yes, Mulan is on this girl power stuff. She's wielding a sword. She knows how to fight. She's making decisions. She's she's she's, she's doing the thing, okay? She's just doing the thing. She's saving all of China. She's saving the emperor. She's saving thousands of people. So, yes, thank you, Mulan, for being a whole girl boss out here. That's why we like this movie. That's one of the reasons why we like this movie. It was the plot. It was the fact that she started, she, she wasn't, she, she was like, I can't, she was obviously struggling with bringing honor to her family, the quote unquote old fashioned way, the traditional way by being a suitable bride. Um, not to say she wasn't a suitable bride, but she just was struggling in that area. And so when it came time to it, and it was between her father dying or her, you know, going on this quest of putting her life in at risk in a, in a great way, because if they found out and they did find out that she was a woman. So yeah, there was a scene when they found out that she was a woman. It was after she had saved she had, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? She had kind of like, she had saved her unit from the Huns by setting off an avalanche. She saved Shang from, um, f falling off a cliff. So basically she saved, she saved the day. She saved the whole day, but she got, she got, she got, uh, 
stabbed essentially um and she was bleeding in her abdomen and so when they took her to start you know they put her in a little medical tent and they found out that she was a girl and um the the emperor's council the little nagging guy in the movie he was like you have basically like you have to you know it has to be done she has to die she's a woman she can't out there she be in a man's camp how does she be in the army how does she lie you know all these kind of things and so he was he was he had every Shang had every right to kill her in that moment just for the fact that she was a woman the fact that she lied about being the lied about who she was all this extra stuff just because of the dishonor she brought on her family um but Shang was like nah life or life because Mulan has saved him and so he did not kill her so that he's like our debt is our debt is owed up you know like we're done so anyway but like I said overall plot Mulan out here kicking butt taking names, saving China from the Huns. It was on some girl boss stuff and we were here for it. IMDb gave this movie a 7.6 out of 10. I would give it, I mean, that was a pretty high. So really, honestly, for IMDb, anything over seven means it was a really, really good movie because most things get between a five and a six and a five, and a five is more so like it was okay, but a six depending on what the movie was about, who's, you know, what, how you, what kind of movies you like, a six could actually be a really good movie. So if it's a seven or above, you know, that movie was top tier, not, you know, seven out above means majority of the people thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I would give it an eight and a half out of 10. One, there's always room for improvement. Um, I would say overall it was just super enjoyable. It was one of those movies that you could literally watch all the time and it would never feel you'd never be like sick of it you know you'd be like ugh Mulan's on again you'd be like oh snap Mulan's on again oh bro let me turn it up and you'd start singing a girl we're fighting for you know so that's the energy that Mulan gives me and I feel like she get the Mulan gives everybody it's just that movie it's just one of those movies that you just enjoy watching so I would say eight and a half out of ten bravo creators and directors and writers and animators you did a great job you did a great job with the script you did a great job with the character selection you did a great job with the casting eddie murphy saved the day most definitely eddie murphy's why you got that point five um but yeah so that's where that's what we got for the movie review portion we will now move into the lessons from portion where we talk about the spiritual application behind me one So as you know, when it comes to spiritual stuff, I like to be scripture heavy. The more the Lord speaks, the less of me, the better. So we got one, two, three, four, five. We got five scriptures to read and three big points about the lessons from that I really took away from this movie. So the first thing that I really took away as like a, a spiritual application you can get from this movie is something that happened at the beginning of the movie when it was talking, when her father um, when, when her father had found out that he was having to go back into the, to the army, even though he had, like, he was like, he had been lame, like crippled by the arm, crippled in during the, during his time in the service and all this stuff. And Mulan is like, you're willing to die for honor. And he was like, I'm, I will, I'm willing to die for what's right. What's right. Goodness. I'm willing to die for what's right. There we go. And so that was, that kind of stood out to me. It was the whole idea of being honorable, having honor, and the idea of being willing to die for what is right. And that honestly reminded me of the Judas and the Black Messiah movie and the 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 lessons from episode for the Judas and the Black Messiah movie. And one of the points was that not everyone can be a revolutionary. And the, the scripture that we used to talk about that was Matthew 16 verses 24 to 28. And I want to go ahead and read that. It's And I, I'm reading out of the NLT. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. If you want to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but lose your own soul? If any, if anything worth, is anything worth more than your soul? For the son of man will come with his angels in the glory of his father and will judge all people according to their deeds. And I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And so that one really, like I said, that whole idea of not everyone can be a revolutionary, not everyone has, what, not everyone is going to be willing to die for what's right. And I wanted to bring that part up because that's a hard, that's a hard pill to swallow. And so that's Jesus' teaching of 
not everyone, you know, my re- the reference that I have was not everyone can be a revolutionary. Something we see that is put into practice of that dying for what's right, being revolutionary, taking that step is in Daniel chapter three. First of all, I want to say I love the book of Daniel. It is only like 12 chapters long. So definitely like something you could read over the course of two weeks. It is a great book. It's it's I just love the book of Daniel. I love it so much. I mean, all the all the books of the Bible are fantastic. But Daniel, Daniel's one of them books. Daniel's like mm, action packed. Just really challenges you and convicts you. Makes you be like, I need to be doing better. I need to be doing better, Lord. Help me do better. So I want to read. You're just going to read about 10 verses out of Daniel chapter three. And I encourage you to read the rest of chapter three because I don't want to go too, too long on this episode. Um, even though I do like to keep it scripture heavy, I don't want to be like over, 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 over. I don't want to put too much. I don't want to put so much scripture on you guys that you miss the main points of what I'm trying to say. So we're going to read just these 10 verses. And then I encourage you to read the rest of chapter three, Daniel chapter three on your own time to kind of finish out the thought, but I'll kind of briefly summarize it. So it says, but some of the astrologers went, so, oh, let me preface it real quick. So this is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They are in uh, Babylon with King Nebuchadnezzar and they are at a point where they are, they're pretty high up in the kingdom, all all four of them, Um, especially, yeah, all all four of them are really high in the kingdom. Um, I don't really know where Daniel was in this particular point in the point of the the story, but shout out Meshach and Abednego. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar makes a, makes a, makes a rule that says that I build this gold statue and everyone has to bow down to it. And it was a rule that was like a, a decree that his, like his, his officials, the officials that were in the same position as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't like them. They were like, I don't know who these little Hebrew dudes is who think they bad or whatever. We don't like y'all. We, they were jealous of them. So they were trying to figure out a way to trick them and, um, get them, you know, basically catch them slipping. And so they knew that these were men of integrity, men of honor, and they would not they would not do something that they deemed was wrong, something that went against their morals, something that went against their, the law, you know, the law of God. And so the law of Moses, I guess is technically called. So they, they kind of encouraged Nebuchadnezzar to be like, you should, you should make a decree that kind of requires everybody to bow down. And anybody who doesn't bow down is punishable by death. And so that's what we're kind of starting off at. So it says, but some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue. When they heard the sound of the the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp pipes, and other musical instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province, the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship in the gold, do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were, when they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I've set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue. I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments, but if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Hold up. Pause. Comma. Nebuchadnezzar got, Nebuchadnezzar got bold on him real quick. He was like, and then what God, what God, you know, the God did you serve? Who would be able to rescue you from my power? The blazing furnace. Ain't nobody going to, ain't nobody going to survive. No fiery furnace. So he was trying to, he was trying to buck up on him. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's reply was, it was a reply of a, of a true G. <laughs> it was a reply of a true gangster out here. They replied together in unison. And they said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Woo! Okay. They went hard on him real quick. They said, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. I thought that was so cold. That was so cold. I love Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But yeah. So, and like I said, read the rest of chapter three. It only gets better because plot twist, God saves them. There's a fourth man in the fire. Um, 
it's kind of alluded that the fourth man is Jesus or an angel, but we know it was God, essentially God saved them. So yes, amen, praise God. So yes, read the rest of that. It's great. But that part right there, especially the last couple of verses was their reply that I really wanted to point out was just how they were willing to die for what they knew was right. They said, God told them, you cannot have, do not have any gods before me. And so Nebuchadnezzar tried to tempt them. He tried to catch him in a trip, catch him slipping. And they was like, mm, not going to work, bro. We're not going to, you ain't going to catch me slipping. Essentially, it's like, I will not bring dishonor on me or my family. I will keep my integrity and I will, I'm willing to die for what is right. I'm willing to die for what the truth that God told me, that God told me to put no other guy before him. I ain't going, I ain't going to put no other guy before him. So it means I got to die. Then I got to die. And that's that, that's that energy. You know, that something we all need to have, we all need to have, it's hard to have that. It's hard to keep that energy, but that, that's the energy that we all need to have. So yes, point number one, I say all that to say point number one was the, the idea of being willing to die for what is right. And, and, and it's not even always like a physical death. It's more so kind of dying to yourself in a, you know, in some ways, being willing to sacrifice for what you know is right. Um, yeah, so just kind of meditate on that. So point number two on the lessons, the lessons from spiritual application. I was kind of like a comparison between Mushu's role in Mulan's life and the Holy Spirit. And obviously, I'm not trying to do this to be sacrilegious or blasphemous. Obviously, Mushu's character is not equivalent to the, the Holy Spirit's role in our lives. But it serves as a sort of visual, you know, a visual guide to kind of start to, to start to kind of encourage your mind to see some similarities to get you thinking about what is the Holy Spirit's role in my life. So yeah, the Mushu's role in Milan's life was to guide her, advise her, protect her, be a friend and a confidant. And that are that's some of the things that the Holy Spirit is for us. And so I wanted to read uh, two different verses. Actually, it's, it's, it's in John chapter 14, verses 16 through 17, and then, then verse, chap, verse 6, 26. Who goodness, I just can't speak today. Excuse me, John chapter 14, verses 16 through 17, and then verse 26. It says, and I will ask the father and he, this is Jesus speaking, and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. So that's verses 16 through 17. Verse 26 says, But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. And if you read the Bible, there is plenty, especially in the New Testament, but also in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, I don't think I don't think they often refer to the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit. Um, it just kind of says God spoke to or X, Y, and Z. But in the New Testament, they definitely call the Holy Spirit by his name the holy spirit is speak the holy spirit spoke to the holy spirit guided me stuff like that and so the, just the fact that knowing that you have the holy spirit guiding you protecting you your comforter your confidant to someone you can he's a he is your direct line to it's like if jesus if jesus is the door then the Holy Spirit is the door frame. <laughs> like Jesus, like Jesus made it possible. And the Holy Spirit is like, is that rope that connects you? Is that line that connects you straight to God, straight to Jesus? Um, the Holy Spirit is God dwelling on the inside of you. So if God is on the inside of you, that's the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You are always in, you are always directly connected to God. And that is, and, and so like I said, obviously Mushu was not always with Mulan. He wasn't dwelling on the inside of Mulan. So he could never be the Holy, he'd never be anything compared to the Holy Spirit. But just the fact that he was there as a guide, as an, as an advisor, as a, an advocate, a confidant, just someone who would teach them and teach you and remind you, that's what the Holy Spirit is for us. He's a, he's a, he's an advocate. He's, he's called a wonderful counselor. He is there to guide us in the way we're supposed to go. He's there to remind us of what we need to do okay sorry i forgot i had another verse i wrote it down but i didn't copy it down anyway so romans 8 verses 26 through 27 is another verse that rip another scriptures that reference the holy spirit and kind of his power what he does for us and this is obviously out of nlt it says and the holy spirit helps us in our weakness for example we do not know what god wants us to pray for but the holy spirit prays for us with groaning and cannot be groaning that cannot be expressed in words 
And the Father who knows our hearts knows that the Holy knows what the Holy Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. So once again, the Holy Spirit on the, on the inside of us knows what 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 we need. God knows what we need because the Holy Spirit knows what we need. And I love I think that was my favorite part of that whole verse was that it says he groans on our behalf. He pleads for us. An advocate, you know, he's he's there advocating for us in the presence of the Father. And so those are just just do some 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 research on your own if you haven't already about just kind of the power of the Holy Spirit, just what he who he is, what he does for you. Um why you have him you know just kind of do some research on the holy spirit just for yourself just to know that it's really going to bring you so much encouragement and comfort to know that you have god dwelling on the inside that you care that god cared about you so much cares about me so much that he sent a part of himself to always be with us to guide us to protect us to tell us what we should be praying for so you're like god i don't know what i need to be. i don't even know what i i know what i want to happen but i don't know what i I don't know what you want to happen. So it's like, God, I pray that you will be done. That's the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Or even if it's like, God, I just pray that, you know, I just pray that X, Y, and Z happens. And it'll be, you know, if you're praying for healing or praying for the healing of someone else or X, you know, whatever it may be, you can just trust that if it's in God's will, it'll happen because the Holy Spirit is, is advocating for you. And it's just a comforting feeling. The Holy Spirit is such a comfort to me. And I that's why I kind of connected with can, you know, I kind of correlated, I'll say, the Holy Spirit to Mushu's role in Mulan's life because he was a comfort to her. She was out there all by herself with just her and her her horse, you know, you know in a strange foreign place. Well, it wasn't foreign to her. I mean, it was a foreign place, essentially. I mean, she was still in China, but she was doing stuff that she ain't never done before. And she was risking her life. And she had someone there to who knew who knew what she was trying to do and was trying to be an encouragement and helper. And that's what the Holy Spirit is with us. We're trying to go out into this world and live lives um, as salt and light, live lives that will be pleasing unto God, where we can show, Jesus, you know, God's love to people. And it's hard. It's so hard out here. And it's so important to know that you have backup, essentially. So you have, you have, you have a force that dwells on the inside of you that, on the inside of you that tells you what you need to say, when to say it, how to say it, and, you know, and just, just guide you and what, what decisions you need to make all the above. That's the Holy Spirit. So the last point that I took from this movie Mulan was it was a, another correlation. It was so Mulan had Shan Yu, which was the leader of the Huns in this movie. And David had Goliath. And I thought that was kind of ironic because, you know, David had nothing but his little five smooth stones and a slingshot. Mulan was a woman. She was greatly underestimated. And all she, you know, and even there was even a scene where she, her and um, the friends that she made in the movie kind of dressed up as <laughs> uh, concubines, women, and they they were able to they were able to get past some of the guards dressed up as women. So, you know, like she had her she she was able to use what she had. That's the whole point. Mulan used what she knew, knew used what she had, and she saved China and defeated defeated Shan Yu and and the Huns. So. I wanted to read 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 32 through 34 and then we're going to skip to verses 48 through 51. And like I said, I don't particularly want to skip because it's all really, really good and really, really important to read it all together. But um, as you can see, there's already like um, like 10 or 11 verses and I don't want to overload you with verses. I just encourage you to go back and read these scriptures for yourself and meditate on them. So verses 32 through 34 says, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. And this is, this is, uh, oh yeah, and says, Saul finally consented. 
All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the middle of the fo- in, in the forehead. The stone stunk in, sunk in, the stone sunk in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. <laughs> so the point I really wanted to kind of highlight was the beginning when 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 Saul was underestimating David, just how Mulan had been underestimated at every turn, especially when they found out that she was a woman. They didn't, they, you know, they wouldn't, no one would listen to her when she was like, the Huns are here, the Huns are here. People were like, oh, please, girl, be quiet. No one, no one would listen to her. And something else that I'm remembering as I'm talking about it was when, so Shan Yu saw, he was like right on, he was riding darn near like three feet away from Mulan when she caused the avalanche that covered all the Huns in snow. So he saw what she looked like. And so when he sees her again, this is, this is a little bit later on in the movie, towards the end of the movie, when he is trying to capture the uh, emperor, he says, he, he refers to Mulan as the soldier from the mountains. And I thought that was interesting that he was like, you know, he didn't call her like, oh, that little girl or whatever. You're a, he didn't even say, oh, you're a woman. He was like, oh, the soldier from the mountains. Like, you're not dead. So it was like, oh, you're not dead and you're a woman? Like, dang. So it was like, it was just something that kind of stood out to me. But just the fact that Mulan was underestimated at every turn, even by her own family. And David was underestimated at every, at every turn, even by his own family. Like just, you know, David was the youngest out of like six or seven or eight brothers or something like that. And, you know, Jesse was assuming that when, when Samuel came to anoint one of his sons to be king, it was, uh, not Dave. It was not David. It was one of the older ones, but it's underestimated. And so I'm going to read the beginning part again. It says, don't worry about this Philistine. David told Saul, I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. And then that's when David goes into how he how he knows God's go, God's got his back. He's like, I've I've fought some other stuff in my life. I've had he said I've had trials and tribulations, and I made it out. I know I can fight this Philistine. And next thing you know, next thing you know, David fights Goliath and he wins. Praise God, Amen, Hallelujah. And that's essentially what happened with Mulan and Shan Yu. She defeats defeats Shan Yu with her wits and her, her own strength and Mushu's help. So that is all I have today for Mulan movie review in a word. I want to give uh, a prayer and then we'll jump into the very, very last part of our our time together. So Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for the ability to come and talk about movies and just how, Lord, you and you have inspired these movies without people even knowing it. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I want to invite you to join the South of Gaza community group on Facebook. It is a a Facebook group where I post the scripture every morning at 930 where it will kind of bless your timeline. You know, I know you be on Facebook scrolling, so go ahead and join, you know, a, Apply to join the group so that you can receive that scripture every morning that will bless your life. Just something positive on your Facebook timeline every morning. I also invite you to connect with me on Instagram at R-A-E-E dot M-I-C-H-E-L-E. Yeah, on Instagram. So you can connect with me so I can get to know who you guys are. And reach out to me. Comment on these posts. Like these posts. Let me know who you guys are who's actually listening. And let me know how you feel about it. And then also you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Can I Be Real podcast YouTube channel. There is a link in my Instagram bio that will take you straight to this YouTube channel so that you can subscribe to it. Um, and like I said, also just connect with me. Let me know what you think. Comment on, um, leave a comment at the end of this episode, this podcast, either on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. Leave a comment on this post when I make a post, um, when the post appears on Instagram. And just let me know what you thought of this episode, what you thought of the movie, what you think of life in general. Just connect with me. I really want to get to know you guys better. Um, But that is all I have for the day. Until next time, keep it simple, drink your water, mind your business, and uh, keep it real. Bye.